One person's socialism is another person's neighborliness. He talks about this wall. I always say, let me know how high it is. If it's 25 feet, then I'll invest in the 30-foot ladder factory. That's not how you stop this. We need to stop congregating. We're going to close the bars. We're going to close the restaurants. We're... Welcome back to Tracking That, a channel where we try to track what liberals are saying, but end up not being able to as usual. So I just woke up from an incredibly democratic process happening overnight where Kamala was unknowingly crowned the official nominee and chose her vice president, Tim Walz. And that was sarcasm, by the way, because there is nothing democratic about this. It's almost as if Kamala Harris wants to lose. She picks my governor from Minnesota, Tim Walz, the worst governor in the country, someone who actually calls themselves a socialist. But we can get out there, reach out, make the case. And for one thing, don't ever, don't ever shy away from our progressive values. One person's socialism is another person's neighborliness. You can't get any more radical than this, but this is a phenomenal pick in my opinion for her and goes to show what decisions she's going to make. He looks older than Trump. He's not from a swing state. He's not a very good public speaker and no one likes him. So let's go over the lowlights of this train wreck. First, he supports exchange surgery for minors. And my God, why is there a young kid in the front with a teddy bear? This is disgusting. Things like this is what should make it a single issue election. Allowing a minor that has mental incapacity to then say they can make permanent decisions on their body is flat out wrong and goes into territory. Second, here's a bill of Tim signing a law to allow driver's licenses to illegal aliens. Yeah, that sounds incredibly safe for us, but he doesn't care about our safety to begin with. He was a strong supporter of the Black Lives Matter rioters. A society that does not put equity and inclusion at the center of it is certainly going to uh, eventually uh, come to the places where we're at. Uh, this is a moment of inflection. It's a moment of real change. It's a moment that those folks who are out there demanding this are, are not going to take a, a commission or a report. Um, they're going to want fundamental change. And, and that is what I think, uh, that's one of the exciting things in the midst of all this. You can feel a sense of optimism coming back. The most political trial of all time, as well as the worst outcome of all time. And he still believes that they had a right to burn down buildings. Either that or he's just pandering to the BLM community. He's a strong supporter of open borders, even making a joke on CNN on investing in a ladder business so the illegal immigrants can jump over the border. You can't make this up. And I think seeing... Uh a plan that's out there talking about it with folks, knowing that he's not going to do anything. He, you know, he talks about this wall. I always say, let me know how high it is. If it's 25 feet, then I'll invest in the 30 foot ladder factory. That's not how you stop this. And this only took like three minutes of me to compile. So we're going to see more and more clips of Tim Walls and his radical agenda come out. But the best way for me to end this video is when Mike Murphy ran against Tim Walls as governor, he made a pretty good video compilation on what we're actually dealing with. I've just signed Executive Order 20-01, declaring a peacetime state of emergency for the state of Minnesota. We need to stop congregating. We're going to close the bars. We're going to close the restaurants. We're going to close the places where we gather. Several hundred thousand of your neighbors were just laid off. An entire industry has been shut down in the face of this, all for the greater good. The governor, with the power of the state constitution behind him, has issued 104 executive orders affecting everything from schools to restaurants and bars to churches to basically every facet of everyday life. Democrats who control the House are moving in the opposite direction. Some are pushing to put a mask mandate in state law. Hi, ho, the Dario. I wear a mask to school. It helps to keep me safe. Explosive testimony from a Minneapolis police union official who says that the governor ordered cops to abandon that third precinct during the spring's rioting. I was in the command post. I heard it. I heard the governor say, give it up. At 932, Chief Arredondo calls the mayor to tell him they've lost control, can no longer maintain order in the city. And then at 1013, Chief Arredondo, who's monitoring the scene from a couple blocks away, gets in the radio to announce defeat. It is citywide tone right now and our loss of the third precinct. The third precinct has been compromised. The mayor said I request the National Guard. Ooh, I'm out this great. We're going to have massively trained troops. No, you're going to have 19-year-olds who are cooks. 